I'm gonna teach you how to make a diamond ring in Blender. We're gonna model the ring, we're gonna model the diamonds, we're gonna make a material for the diamonds, and if you wanna learn how to animate the ring, then go watch my product animation tutorial. And if you do what I do in this video, you can definitely get paid to do this for a jeweler in your area. If you Google diamond ring, you're gonna find six million pictures of diamond rings. I opened this one right here. The resolution is huge, so I can zoom in and see all the details. I'm gonna throw this shit on my second monitor, but if you don't have a second monitor, you can go right click, save image as, make a new folder for this project and save the image in that folder then go up here to the outliner change this to image editor with this little menu up here now you can open an image locate the image in your files and now you can look at this image in blender as you're working otherwise just google pure ref download this program and figure it out and you'll be all right and now we can start modeling the ring we're going to start by modeling the metal shit on this ring. And usually when you're modeling something like this, it's easier if you start modeling the more complex areas and then you make the simpler areas from that. So we're going to start by modeling this crown up here, which is holding the diamond. And from that, we're going to create this ring and afterwards we're gonna make the diamonds and whatever. So delete the default cube, add a new cube, rotate by 45 degrees. We're gonna scale it down just a little bit on the Z axis, something like 0.7 will do. Then select the edges on the corners, control B to bevel them, and we just want to cut off the edges a little bit like this now we're going to select everything and rotate it again by 45 degrees i don't know why we did that in the first place but anyway extrude this edge push the lower edge further outwards extrude this again and you can bring this edge closer like this slide this one backwards and it's probably going to be better if you use as little geometry as possible for now so let's just go to side view like this lift this up here let's clean up the geometry on top here by joining some of these vertices here with j also do the same on the underside and it's probably a good idea to select both of these surfaces on the top and the bottom. Go to individual origins, extrude, right click, scale down. That's going to give us a little bevel here. And when we add a subdivision surface modifier, we're not going to have any problems here. If we would have used an end gone, then this shit would just look weird and it would be hard to work with it. But this way it's a little bit nicer. And after we add some supporting loops later, it's going to look pretty damn perfect. Let's go back to side view. Give me this vertex and slide it down a bit. Extrude this up again. You can even do control click anywhere. And then it's going to get extruded and it's going to follow your mouse anywhere you click. So we're going to bring it over like this, and this is the part that holds the diamond. If you want, we can add some more loop cuts down here. You can move that around to make some more space. You can move this one around, add another one here. You can do whatever you want, just play around with it a little bit. You're gonna get the shape that you're looking for like this. I want this shape to be a bit different, so I'll move this vertex up. I'll move this one up as well, and I'm trying to make this into more of a straight line. Although this part down here is supposed to be a bit more flat, so something like this will do. Get rid of this one, push this out, lift this up, and I think this is roughly the shape that we're looking for. Now we can select all of this geometry that you see me selecting right here then select all the edges at the top Control b give me a small bevel here with two segments go down here to the bevel menu set the shape to one and that looks pretty damn cute we're also going to add a loop cut over here to tighten up this shape but not too much and if you want you can also add one here now this is a little bit sharper but not as sharp as this inner edge but let's not do that just yet so undo a couple of steps delete these faces on the other sides here x delete faces select this entire thing that's sticking out here place the 3d cursor to the world origin with shift s now go to top view 3d cursor pivot point we don't have to do that for this but now it's too late so whatever then go alt e spin set the number of steps to four and check use duplicates now you copy this four time in a circle select everything m merge by distance and now we got this little claw thing that's holding the diamond it kind of looks like one of those things when you go to the fucking arcades you put in a coin and then you gotta control that hook shit where you grab a kitten or something and this is what they sometimes use to push cocaine but now we're going to select all these edges on the inside here then all the edges at the top and make sure you also got the edges which are connecting everything here in the middle then we can do control b add a little bevel there you can control how small you want this bevel to be because that determines your sharpness i don't want it to be too sharp so something like this will do you can even adjust the shape value if the shape value is lower the edge is going to be a lot softer but i like to just go with one so let's do that now give me a loop cut around this entire shape like this give me these edge loops around the top like this and with double g i'm going to slide them down a bit and then slide them inwards again with double g we can also take these edges around the base and slide them down a bit. I'm just trying to make this top part a little bit softer. Then go object, shade smooth, and that looks lovely. Now place that 3D cursor in the middle. In edit mode, we're going to rotate this by 45 degrees. Crown is now ready. Let's make the ring. 
To make the ring, let's remove our subdivision surface modifier and let's go back to flat shading. This makes it easier to see what we're doing. To make the ring, we're going to use some geometry from the corners over here and over here. We're going to select this surface, extrude it out with E, and before we do that, it might be better if we just delete the surface, fill this in, fill this in, then fill in the faces at the front. And now we have a bit less geometry here, which is going to make it a lot easier to make the shape that we're looking for. You might also want to do something about this here. For example, it might be a good idea to select this entire edge loop that goes around here, double G to slide it up, merge vertices by distance, then take this and slide it up as well. Now later when you extrude the ring down here, you can bring this loop cut back and it's also going to help tighten up the ring. Until then, this just improves the shape on the inside here. Lift this up and now let's make the fucking ring. So to make the ring, we're going to need a perfect circle. Let's go to side view, shift A, empty, circle, scale it up and lower it down to here somewhere. You can even duplicate this and scale it up to create the outline. And now this is the rough shape that we're trying to create with the ring. So it turns out that this extrusion is not going to work here. We just have to remember the shape of these edges out here. And instead, we're going to create a circle here in the middle. Let's do 32 vertices, flip it sideways. We should probably do some more vertices so we can create these diamonds on the sides here later. Let's try 48 vertices. Now I think that looks a little bit better for fitting these diamonds here. Place that around here, extrude right click, scale it up further and bring it to the outer edge. Now select the crown, put the 3D cursor over here on this vertex on the side of the hole. Then take all this geometry and scale it to zero on the y-axis while the 3D cursor is the pivot point. Delete the geometry on the inside here because we don't need that. You can join these into the same object. Cursor over here, select this one, shift S, selection the cursor. Now that's going to connect there and connect the lower one down here. We're also going to have to straighten this out. So scale that to zero on the y-axis while the cursor is up here. Alternatively, you can bring this one here. Let's do that for now because it's a bit less destructive. Give me a loop cut in the middle. Snap this one over here. Merge by distance. Give me a loop cut here, a loop cut here. Select these two vertices, join with J. Same thing on the bottom. Select all these edges around here. Control E, mark seam. In face select mode, press L to select this half. Delete faces with X. Also mark a seam down here at the bottom and delete this half as well. 3D cursor in the middle. Select this half of the ring. Shift D, right click. Scale to minus one on the Y axis. Now it's connected on this side. Select this entire edge loop. Deselect this. Go to W, bridge edge loops. If W doesn't work for you, it's probably because I'm using 3.6.5 because I don't feel like updating this shit. You can go up here to edge, bridge edge loops and you'll be all right. Same thing on the bottom. W bridge edge loops. And now you can select everything. Shift D, right click S, X minus one. Shift N to correct the normals. M merge by distance. Now we got a full ring. Let's get rid of these empties now. Object shade smooth. Give me some subdivision surface. We definitely got to do something about this geometry at the bottom. So let me go get some more coffee and then we're going to fix the topology. Delete all this geometry down here at the bottom. Take these vertices over here and also these on the other side. We're gonna bring those together by scaling it down to the Y axis. And I know this shit here is twisting, but that's gonna go away when we add a subdivision surface modifier. So it doesn't matter. Now we can just fill this, fill this, fill this, fill this, fill this. There's something weird going on here. So let's try to take care of that as well. It's because we have this very sharp twist on the face here. So we gotta take care of that. This is usually the type of shit that you get when you have very long and thin faces like this. To prevent this type of shit from happening, you want to try and keep your geometry uniform, which means in general, you want all your faces to have the same shape and the same size approximately. We're not going to go deep on topology in this video. I talked about all this in my ebook, but we can make some more videos about topology if you want. Let me know in the comments what you want me to talk about. We're going to try to rearrange some of this topology down here. For example, we can take these vertices and join them with J also on this side. Same thing on the other side. Now place a 3D cursor on this edge, select the faces in the middle and scale them down on the Z axis. You can even scale them down to zero, although that kind of fucks with the shape of a circle so maybe it'll be better if we take this geometry we lift it up a little bit then deselect the outsides lift this up a little bit further and then take the middle part and also bring that up a bit further now it's going to be a bit more circular and if you have two loop cuts here scale them up on the y-axis i think this is going to look pretty good maybe we should just straighten this out a little bit scale this to zero on the y-axis also on the other side then put the 3d cursor right here select this entire segment and scale it to something like 0.5 on the y-axis but not zero maybe you can even do something like 0.25 you can take Take this edge out here and slide it all the way out. Take these vertices out here and slide them up a little bit. Make sure to do everything on both sides. You might want to use a mirror modifier for this. We can even get rid of this edge and this one to get rid of the triangles. Now take this part, scale it up on the X axis, slide this up a bit, slide this up a bit. And I'm just trying to do what I can to make this geometry a little bit more even and balanced. I'm trying to prevent any weird twisted and long faces. And now finally, let's make some more supporting loops. We can't run a loop around here. So let's get rid of all this shit on the inside. Fill this, fill this. 
fill this, fill this, fill this. Now our geometry is redirected so we can place edge loops around here. So give me two loop guts here. Scale them up a bit to bring in close to the sides. Give me the face loop at the bottom. Scale it up on the Y axis. Now this got pretty sharp. If you want, we can do a loop cut right here. Also on the other side. Then with double G, you can slide those at the same time. Just be careful not to get this weird shit going on down here. Anyway, object shades move. That's fucking good enough. How about we try adding some diamonds over here to the sides? When we're adding the ring diamonds, first we have to make some holes here on the side. And it's gonna be kind of the same shit as up here where this crown or this claw is holding a diamond. Except on a much smaller scale. And it has to be a lot more organized because we have to be careful not to fuck up the geometry here. So let's take these faces that we have from over here. Get rid of the subdivision. And now let's inset these faces. Check edge rail. Let's set the thickness here to something like 0.15 just to keep things even. And then we can also do the same thing on this next one. Now delete the areas which we inset. We can also delete this part. Fill this fill this two loop cuts here and here we're going to align those with this little shit that's sticking out here so scale to zero on the y-axis also over here on this side fill this fill this fill this loop cut this fill this fill this fill this fill this fill this delete this and delete this because we fucked up give me a loop cut here first and now we can fill this properly so fill this fill this fill this fill this fill this and fill this fucking hell slide this down and now we got this little bullshit that's holding the diamond i think it would be nice if we tried to split this as you can see over here these things are kind of split and they go two ways and then we're going to be able to turn this into more of a circular shape so let's slide this down a bit then select these two faces alt e extrude individual faces and push that out with individual origins we're going to press s shift y and scale these down and make them pointier we can also bring this inwards using the same method and now let's add a loop cut here and here place the cursor down here select this s shift y let's try 0.5 also do the same over here slide this out and when we add some supporting geometry later i think this is gonna look pretty damn good delete this little thing cursor over here and then we can select whatever we got over here duplicate it bring it to the other side and now we can treat this as one section so select these edge loop control e mark seam delete the next section like this we gotta place the 3d cursor exactly in the middle of this circle so to do that we're gonna use these vertices we can even place the origin over here so we remember that for later and we had what 48 edges on this circle so if we do 360 degrees divided by 48 that's 7.5 which means we can take Take this little segment duplicate it and rotate by minus 7.5 and then that's going to connect perfectly and we just have to do that enough times here so let's delete a couple more segments down here we don't have to go full circle it only goes down to about here somewhere we can delete all that select these two segments shift the right click this time we can rotate by 15 then copy everything again this time we can do 30 and let's just do 30 a couple more times deselect this part and just delete anything extra here now we just got to connect this part down here fill this fill this we also also gotta add one more up here otherwise it's gonna look like shit so let's add a loop cut here this one's gonna be a little bit different because the shape here is a bit different delete these faces select this one duplicate rotate by 7.5 now just connect this geometry using your 3d cursor we should probably delete this because we can't fit a diamond in only half of this although maybe we can bring another one to this side so let's try deleting this too give me this shift the right click rotate 7.5 and now we can try connecting this shit we might have to delete some faces and replace them with some new ones for example i don't want this long face over here i'll fill this fill this and i think i can live with a triangle down here give me a loop cut over here and let's delete all this shit on this side we also need two loop cuts over here so that we can connect this fill this part on the inside here now we just gotta tighten up the edges to do that we're going to very carefully select some geometry this here this thing on the outside here but not the middle edge select this geometry over here don't go around here we want to go on the inside and now just go around here and select all these edges like this one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There was definitely an easier way to do this. Do the same on the other side. And now everything that we got selected is out here on the side. And it's also connected up here. So we're going to press Control B to bevel everything. Again, shape one, two segments. And look at how beautiful that looks when we add a subdivision surface modifier, doesn't it? Once we got this shit sorted, select everything, shift D, right click, scale to minus one of the X axis, correct the normals, M merge by distance. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Why do females go so crazy over a piece of metal and some rocks? I know not. Get them a fucking hamster instead they're gonna love it way more than this usually if you get a chick a ring she's gonna dump you anyway because somebody like Aryan is gonna come in with a hamster next let's add some diamonds 
No matter what we do with these diamonds, we're gonna have to go to cycles, which means this is gonna take about eight years to render. Anyway, let's try shift A, give me a circle with eight vertices. Maybe 10 would do a little bit better. Let's lift this up here. Give me every other edge. Individual origins will scale that down. Extrude this down and scale it up a little bit. Then take these outer edges again, scale them up with individual origins. Take the edge loop in the middle, extrude right click, scale down. Take these edges here, individual origins, scale them to zero. Lift this up, fill. It's up to you how big or small you want this circle to be. I think this looks pretty cool. Extrude this down. Give me a loop cut over here. Place the cursor on this vertex. 3D cursor's pivot point. Select this one and scale it away from the 3D cursor like this. Maybe a little bit less. And then to fix this twisting, we're gonna have to lift this one up a little bit. And you can try to align your view with this and try to turn this into a flat surface like this. It doesn't have to be exact, but this is more or less okay. We're gonna delete all these other inner segments. Cursor in the middle. Select this. In top here, we're gonna do Alt E, spin, use duplicates. I want five. Merge by distance. Extrude this right click lower it down scale it down to zero you can make this whole thing a bit thicker and now we got a cute diamond lower that down here scale it up we got to make some kind of cut in these things which is going to allow us to place this diamond here scale this up on the z-axis slide this geometry up a little bit so we have some more space we're also going to take these lift them up too now we can take this inset with i we kind of fucked up because we have five sides of this diamond but four sides of the crown so let's make the diamond with eight vertices instead scale this down extrude this down scale this up fill this Fill this, fill this, fill the top. Two loop cuts here, scale this up a little bit. Again, extrude this down. Loop cut here, scale this away. Correct this, extrude this thing down, scale to zero. Now we got another diamond. Let's put that into place right here. So according to that, we're going to slide this geometry here. Slide this inwards, then bring it down. Bring this shit up, bring this up too. And once we got the rough shape, we can delete this, fill in the gap on the inside, then just bevel the outside, uncheck loop slide. And now we got that cut out here. So let's delete all the other tops here. Select this one, alt D spin. Use duplicates. Now all four of these are in place. And now we can use this diamond and place it into all the other holes here. So let's duplicate this. Give me some geometry from the bottom of this hole here. Shift D, right click, separate to a new object. You can even fill this and get rid of this down here. Place the 3D cursor right there. We can scale this up, snap this diamond to that surface and scale it down. Now activate this magnet shit up here and switch to face project. Check these two boxes. And now just press G to move this and place it anywhere on this plane. Disable the magnet and set it back to increment. Delete this, rotate the diamond by 180 degrees, and now its local Y axis is aligned with the normal of this hole here. So place the 3D cursor here, snap it over there, lift it up a little bit like this, scale it down, and just adjust it until it fits nicely into this hole here. Now place the cursor in the middle of the ring, select this, Alt E, spin, let's do 48 steps, use duplicates of course, and then just delete all this shit at the bottom where we don't have any diamonds. Now we got a bunch of diamonds arranged in a circle. We can join those into the same object as this one up here, parent that to the ring, and the diamond ring is finished let's make some materials switch to the shading workspace new material for the ring this is going to be the silver or the platinum or the white gold or whatever the fuck they use for these things let's name it platinum because i like how that sounds crank up metallic reduce the roughness and that's pretty much it then let's make the other material which is going to be the diamond name that diamond delete the principal node and here's something i learned from this guy on youtube called point cloud he's got a pretty damn good tutorial for how to make a diamond shader and it's only three minutes i don't feel like spending 22 minutes watching a fucking diamond material tutorial so shout out to this guy let's drop him a like while we're at it you're going to add a glass bsdf node set the roughness to 0.001 according to mr point cloud then duplicate this two times so you have three of these nodes set the first color to red i like how it looks a little bit better when you reduce the saturation to something like 0.85 the second color is going to be green and the third color is going to be blue now we're going to add an add shader node plug the red and the green into this node then add another add shader node plug the blue into this node and the other add shader node into this plug right here then plug everything in the surface. And now we got the first step. Then he says add a value node. Set the value here to 2.418. And plug this value into the IOR of every single glass node. Then add a math node and duplicate it. Set one of them to subtract. And the subtract node we're going to add here between the value node and the red glass node. Make sure that the value here is plugged into the first value slider. Then do the same shit for the add node but with the blue color. And then we need another value node. And the value here is supposed to be 0. 
0.045. I don't know why these numbers are the way they are, and I didn't feel like analyzing how this shit works. It's really interesting because he's trying to simulate the actual properties of real diamond. So if you want to understand how this shit works, go watch the real video. It's going to make a lot more sense. You're probably going to learn a bunch of things about how nodes work. So if I remember, then I'll put the link for this tutorial below. And if I don't remember, then just search this up and search the guy's name, and you're going to be able to find it. We then need another glass node, and we've got to plug this value into the IOR again. And then we've got to add a mix shader node, plug this last node from before into the lower plug of this new mix shader, use this glass BSDF as the second shader. And then we've got to add a light path node, and is camera radius going to be the factor? Now plug shader into surface. And I got no idea what the fuck this thing does. I don't really care. I just want diamonds. I'm going to save this material for next time. But now when you go to render view, this is going to behave a lot like a diamond. If you want to be even cooler, you can select this top part of the diamond, add a bevel with one segment, and now the reflections here are going to look a lot more detailed. You can fuck around with some of the properties here. For example, you might want to reduce the saturation of the colors. You might even want to change the colors altogether or use a different color. But now you got a beautiful diamond going. And usually jewelry websites like to render this in just simple white backgrounds. So if you want to render this, then add a plane, scale it up, extrude everything up and delete the top face. Probably a circle would have done better so we can just bevel the sides. You're gonna light this fucking scene up as bright as humanly possible. Add a couple of powerful lights above the ring. Make sure that the surrounding area is lit as well. And now look how cute this is going to look when you let it render in the viewport a little bit. You can make the platinum a little bit more visible by reducing the brightness of the base color a little bit. You can even try to do some fancy rose gold shit. Try to adjust the roughness to get a different look. But overall, I think this is absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna try to make a little spin animation in cycles and let this shit cook overnight so I can put it on my Instagram. And if you haven't already, then make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post a bunch of crazy shit on my stories and we talk about a whole lot of different things. You can ask anybody. Follow me on Instagram is the most fun experience on earth. Also follow me on Twitter where we get political and I give a bunch of tips for random shit every day. And follow me on my Rumble account. This is where we're going to make a bunch of in-depth long lectures about any topic you guys want. I'm, I'm gonna do some vlogging in the future. And make sure to check out my Blender ebook. I put a bunch of tips in there that you probably never heard of before. Everything that I ever use for modeling is in there. And I'm about to release a massive update for texturing with more than 100 pages. But at least like the video and subscribe to the fucking channel. Let me know what you want to see next and I'll see you in the next one.